missed our cue. Wow. Um, how's it going? Hello. It's Tuesday night. We're uh, a couple minutes late here tonight. Uh, man, oh man. Hasn't been a good start. <laughs> it hasn't been a good, a, uh, a, a good start. We've had uh, some technical issues. We got Knock those results. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff going on today. Uh, just a couple of minutes ago, we got a, uh, a script, the entire 10-page uh, script from last night's Monday Night Raw. We're going to try to put that up for you guys during the commercial break, but um, looking through that script and a lot of interesting things that are uh, that are on it. So we're going to do uh, we're going to try to put that up for you during the uh, the commercial break. Put some Im images up on the uh, on the server for you guys so that you can look through that. Um, been very busy uh, yesterday and today, man. Every Tuesday night, let's get the chat room up. Uh, every Tuesday night, it seems like when we go off the air here, something big breaks. Yeah. Uh, a couple of months ago, it was May Young had passed away. Um, last Tuesday night, everybody knows by now. I mean, literally. When we got off the air, we found out about. I mean, minutes later. Minutes. Yeah. Uh, it was less than an hour. Uh, if we less, and less we went long. If we would have went an extra, because we went two hours and like twenty-eight minutes or something like that, right? Right. If we we, did, went, we did go if, long. You're right. If we would have went two thirty-five, yeah. somebody would have told us in the chat, "Holy shit!" You know, and then we could have talked about it then. It's, so I, here I, we are, I a mean, week later. Yeah. We were yeah. gonna do a tribute show. Hold but. it up. <laughs> uh, we uh, we were gonna do a tribute show, you know, and and we had figured that you know the news broke on Tuesday night. I was so tired. I mean, you guys saw me last Tuesday. You you as well, man. We came on here. I was exhausted, and I said, you know what? It's finally over, man. I wasn't all, that tired. All the access uh, festivities are are done. Uh, WrestleMania is over. The Raw is over. SmackDown's the last thing going on. Things are going to taper down. Wednesday, we're going to get back to normal. And then the Warrior news broke on Tuesday night. Wednesday was ridiculous. Oh. As just more and more news. I was up until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, covering that Warrior story. You were up all night. On the long shot, people don't know what that warrior story is. You still haven't said. Well, yeah, I said everybody knows that last Tuesday night, warrior had passed away. Yeah, okay, I missed that. Okay. Um, it was. Uh, I mean, it was unreal. And then, you know, we were gonna do a, a tribute show over the weekend, and then Saturday it was ridiculous. For Saturday, it was ridiculously busy. Then I said, all right, we can't do it Saturday. We'll do it Sunday. Sunday was crazy busy. Sunday night was even busier. And then we got to Monday, which was Raw yesterday. There's no way that we could have done it then. So we just figured that today, because Raw was a tribute show to Warrior anyway, we'll kind of... Our show will be know, the same as theirs. It wasn't a full... Like, they're normally they're tribute shows. Owen Hart, Eddie Guerrero, and unfortunately, even the right. Chris Benoit one, were complete two hours at the time dedicated to nothing but... That well, right. I know you know what I can I can recall the Owen Hart tribute show. I remember some beers tonight. Yeah, Austin had a beer and he left it in the ring. Uh, and The Rock said, "You know, damn it, you know The Rock loves you like no other." And so they were cutting promos and shit too. Right, right. And there right, were right. matches, yeah, because guys were told. I know this. Yeah, they were told if you want to, you can work. You don't have to if you're if you're mm. too you know fucked up. That's what I remember that. I remember yeah, yeah, that, right. But uh, so I, uh, you know, I mean, listen, you and I. We joke around a lot around here, and there'll be times where I'll yell in through the wall and I'll say, Hey, WWE.com, JTG released, or, or yeah. WWE.com, Summer Rae fired. We lie. You go to WWE.com, you check, and you're like, yeah, you know, he yells back through the wall. You're a fucking asshole, man. You're an asshole. I came in here on Tuesday night. I could tell too. You had looked like you had looked like you just seen a ghost, man. You came I, in the room with before you even said it, and I'm thinking it's something like because you hadn't said anything. You I thought you were anything. gonna tell me my mom died or something. Like you had a look on your face, like you were white as a ghost. I'm like, oh fuck, what is he about to say? You know, do you remember the one time when my stepdad passed away? Like, I had to deal with that, right. and like, you you know, but this one, I was like, fuck, he's about to give me some real serious news right now. I here. opened Boone's and door. It was. I opened Boone's door, and, <coughs> and I think I, I said, dude, the warrior's dead. I said, Ultimate Warrior's dead. No, you prefaced it. You said, dude, I swear to God, I'm not joking. I'm not Before joking. you said anything, and I'm waiting for the fucking killer lo lose. Mm. And bam, Warrior's dead. I said, I'm like, dude, what? I said, dude, I am, I'm not fucking joking with yeah. you, man. Ultimate Warrior is dead. And then I shut the door and I walked away. 
and then you went to either w. dot com, com or or, or yeah. wherever it was, and you. Or said, was TMZ? Maybe it was one of the other. I don't know. I, I heard you yell. The, you know, yell I back. Said, holy shit, shit yeah. man! He said, "Holy shit, um, man!" I mean, we're we're gonna get into it. We're yeah, gonna talk about that it. Was my childhood. Yeah, I wrote a pretty yeah. good piece about uh, a remembrance I had of Warrior and being a kid and stuff like that. Right. Uh, on eWrestlingNews.com, I put a column up uh, yeah. the day after it happened, I think, or the same night, one or the other. But yeah, like it was a big part of my childhood, Ultimate Warrior, you know? Yeah. Hulk Hogan, yeah. more so than Warrior, but I was a, a rabid fan when the torch was passed to Warrior in Toronto at WrestleMania 6, and it was like a big deal for a kid, you know? And then you tell me that news, and I start thinking back to. You being know, a youngster, and I'm like, wow, he's wow. I think I think the news broke at about 10:30 Eastern time. It was right around 10:30 Eastern time. That would have been almost exactly 24 hours from when we had because yeah, because he Warrior was the album, come he out. Was hour 10 on yeah, Raw. He was hour. He was that third hour on yeah. Raw. So it would have been exactly 24 hours since we well, had the news seen broke them on television. Hours. He collapsed at like five or six in the afternoon in Arizona, they said, right? It happened earlier in the day yeah. and then the news. Well it was evening out. time. It was five or six PM I believe. In uh, Arizona. Yeah, that one he actually Oh okay, so that'd be an hour behind, so that would be uh three two hours behind. Three? Three. You sure it's not two? Is Arizona and Vegas is three hours? So Arizona's two hours. down south. Two hours. Yeah, yeah. Two hours in the middle there somewhere. Right. I right. think I'm not yeah. geographically. geographically been, uh, sound. Yeah, it would have been two hours. So, so yeah, that, if it was five, or, let's say it was six. That means it would have been eight o'clock our time, which would have been two hours previous to the ten right. o'clock hour he opened up Raw the night before. So it would have been twenty two hours since we've seen him. Yeah. On yeah. TV or yeah, twenty six, whatever. Much, fuck, yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, and more and more information started coming out about this, and uh, we're going to get into it here in just a second. We're going to get the plugs out of the way, and then what we're going to do in our numero uno, what we'll do is WWE one did uh, one uh, WWE did a uh, tribute show last night to the Ultimate Warrior. So we'll give uh, some memories. Um, about Warrior here in hour number one. And then in hour number two, uh, like we said, we're going to try to put the raw script up for you during the break on the uh, on the, on the web servers and give you a link to that. Um, and then in addition to that, we're going to try to do rapid fire. We're uh -oh. having some uh, production issues uh, right now, tonight. It says, huh? it says the picture's skipping and everybody's pointing up. Is it skipping? Yeah. yeah, we're having big time production issues tonight. Yep, hopefully. it's the computer. So Is I've it? already clicked it. Watch. The computer fucked Boom, up, huh? Boom, came up. X out the browser. X out the uh, X out the browser and see if uh, if that helps us a little Son bit. Son of a bitch, man. Yeah, you know what it is. Boone's uh, Boone's computer is uh, having some lagging issues tonight. So uh, I already exited out. Did you? Telling you. <laughs> Did that work? Stop too. Now it's back, and it's gonna keep doing it. I bet. We might you not think? even be on the air right now. I don't know. You think? Really? I don't know. Let's see if we do this. Wow, your computer is that bad, huh? It's something with the web browser, man, because... Yeah? It would be it fine up until we loaded the goddamn no, browser. No, it did. Right it's got to be the browser. You don't have a. Uh, you don't have another browser that we could. Uh, they would be worse. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna skip out big time if uh, if we keep. I mean, hopefully it comes back around here in a minute, right? That doesn't look good. What I'm looking at on the side there. It won't clear up a little bit. I don't know. You don't think? Let's we'll see. Hmm. All right, right click. Let's see how long it takes. Yeah, it's really freezing up that bad, huh? Yeah. I mean, that'll look quicker. But yeah, it still says over here if you see. It's got some yeah. weird messages. Jesus yeah. Christ. Hmm. I'm not sure what to do Computer here. Computer issues. We could, um. How about that? I think what we need to do, dude, is we need to run a virus check on uh, on your computer. I, you know what we could do? We could go and we could get that raw script up. That's because I closed the browser. Yeah, it's it's going to come back. See, now we're, now we're clear as day. Okay. So are we good now? Yeah. Here's what we need to know. Are we on the air right now? We like, should be good. There's no way to check to know until I load a browser up and look at the chat room, which would cause it to happen all over again. Get the plugs out of the way for a second. All right, go check. Do some quick. plugs. Well, tell me if we're on the air. Well, all you right. should have it. Just turn the speakers up, right? You can yeah. hear it. Do okay. some plugs. Uh, everybody check out the official website of WZR uh, TV, WZRonline.com over there. Top navigation, all that crap you normally says. Twitter, Facebook, all the links are there. Uh, I think it's called the Social Media Dropdown tab. I don't know. It's not my site. WZRonline.com. Uh, Ryan's on Facebook. You can go to Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. 
Facebook.com slash Matt Boone, WZR is mine. Are we good to go? Good to go. Okay, so let's do it. It's going to come back fast as hell, too. Uh, we're back we're, right now. It's still lagging because they're a minute or two behind. Yeah. I got an idea. I got an idea. Because it's so busy and we just got that raw script, how about this? And we don't have the chat room. I forgot to turn it down. Oh, I did forget to turn it down. <laughs> how about this, man? Why don't we give them two shows this week, okay? They didn't get an Ultimate Warrior tribute show yeah. at, that we were going to give them on Saturday or Sunday. Why don't we do an hour show tonight, hour, hour and a half show tonight, all about Warrior, okay? We'll mix it in with I'm trying with, to think of how many Raw. things we could really talk. Well, I mean, if we want to go through his career and stuff like well, that. Well, that's like, what I'm saying. Okay. We'll do, uh, this will be I all Ultimate that. Warrior, right? We'll do all, because we're back, it's it's fast for all of you guys now. Should but, be, uh, yeah. No, we're, we're good to go. But uh, so everything tonight will be ultim ultimate warrior because I got to be honest with you guys, we were going to come on here, we weren't going to be doing rapid fire tonight, and we were going to be taking your live phone calls either because no. of the production issues. So we'll do the show, warrior show, <coughs> uh, warrior tribute tonight, and then tomorrow night. We'll why don't we come back? Try and clean this up so that tomorrow night right. we could do rapid fire calls, news. Rapid fire. You'll get your regular show tomorrow night. So we'll do two shows, and we'll have the chat room and everything up and <laughs> up and running again tomorrow night. But this will all be ultimate. You guys wanted an Ultimate Warrior show, so we'll give that to you guys tonight. All right. Ultimate Warrior, and then tomorrow night you'll get your regular WZR show. And we can intertwine it a little bit with Monday Night Raw from last night. He, yeah, well. he was a lot of stuff on there about him. So. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. We can works. still go an hour, hour and a half, so that'll be perfect. All right, so like Boone just said, the uh, the official website of WZR TV Tuesdays, WZRonline.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZR Army, YouTube.com slash WZR WZR Archive, and we're on Twitter as well, WZROnline.com, top navigation bar, social media tab, drop down menu, it's got all the links to Facebook, Golden. Twitter, and YouTube all right there, WZROnline.com, the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays. All right, so, burning, burning, I got my SIG down here, maybe that's what it is, huh? It's not lit. It was lit. <laughs> oh, okay. So, all right, listen. <coughs> We just talked about it last Tuesday night after we went off the air here tonight. Ultimate Warrior passed away. It was so shocking because we had seen him at the Hall of Fame ceremony. We had seen him at Raw. You and I, and we even came on here last week, and we kind of joked around about it, where Warrior came out, and I said, when he was shaking the yeah. ropes, I said... He blew you, you, you lose all your muscle mass? He what got, happened? He got tired as shit shaking the ropes, and he didn't really even shake them that much. He was exhausted. And yeah. that was part of. They played that awesome video package to to I'm open up the speakers to open right. up raw. Right. They right, played right. an awesome video. I'll talk to you guys instead of this guy. Oh, they open, they uh they they played an awesome video package to start up the show, and one of the clips in it, and it was a, a really touching video package. I got choked up watching it. I didn't cry, but I came close. But uh, one of the clips they showed in the video package was him shaking the ropes on Raw last week. Uh -huh. And as soon as he gets done, you see him take a deep breath and go, <coughs> right, like that. Like he was, and that he was, gassed. yeah, so that was damn near included in and it. Then, and when you go back and you look at the Hall of Fame speech, and he was sweating profusely. Same thing on Raw, he was sweating yeah. profusely. Um, and then it was, you know, the, the thing that made it all the more eerie was the That's promo the right word, yeah. that he cut on Raw I've where he that, said, you, you know, yeah, go ahead and load it up. Um, well, this is just the, uh, the this is the, the famous quote. Do you want the whole promo or just the quote? I got the, What's the promo, about five minutes? If I hit, no, it's three minutes. It's give, give a minute the, and a half. Give actually. us the full promo. I believe. Oh, no, I've got the wrong thing loaded up. All right, so I'll have to give you the full one. Yeah. All right, yeah, that works. That works. Okay, here we so go. this is the promo from uh, Monday Night Raw. Speak to me, warrior! <laughs> As I thought about what I was going to say, this evening, it's been hard for me to find the words. That's... Oh. This is where he uh, put the mask on. Oh, this is going to be great. This movie says hold this. There you go! 
There's the warrior. We were joking about that too when he handed it. Well the then, you shut up, warrior, and let me do the talking. This was even a little bit corny when we were watching it. We were like, oh. no WWE talent becomes a legend on their own. This is where it starts, right here. The quote: Every man's heart one day beats its final beat. His lungs breathe their final breath. And if what that man did in his life makes the blood pulse through the body of others, it makes them bleed deeper in something than larger than life, then his essence, his spirit, will be immortalized by the storytellers, by the loyalty, by the memory of those who honor him and make the running the man did live forever. You, 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 you are the legend makers of Ultimate Warrior. In the back, I see many potential legends, some of them with warrior spirits and you will do the same for them. You will decide if they lived with the passion and intensity, so much so that you will tell your stories and you will make them legends as well. I am Ultimate Warrior. You are the Ultimate Warrior fans. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run Forever. You know, and it was the fact that he kept, you, you know, during warrior. during that promo, kept talking about the spirit and every man's heart takes its final beat and and being immortalized through the love of others that he's affected. Yeah, but I mean, he's if you really go through. Because I did a lot of research. I not only wrote a piece for E Wrestling News right. on Warrior, but yesterday the the second one I had to do for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my boss was uh, on Warrior. So I did a lot of in that one. He wanted he had a very specific idea of what he wanted. So I had to do a lot of research on you know Wikipedia, Google, blah 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 blah. I, he wanted the YouTube clips to intersect with the matches I pick and all this stuff. So I'm watching old promos. I'm watching old matches. I'm reading up on them and. And yeah, and, I, and just remembering from childhood, because a lot of things that people would point out about Warrior, uh, in addition to the cool music, in addition to the the body, in addition in addition to the entrance, which was very you know notable, uh, and the whole presentation that he had was uh, his promos, and they were very. His promos never made sense. Basically, yeah. People, people but he would, would talk. He would say shit like that a lot. Like right, right. So it wasn't. You, it, this, wasn't it wasn't that. Out of, yeah, and that's right. why nobody really. Because let's say if this was, uh, throwing a name, The Rock, if he's out there doing a promo and all of a sudden he's talking about... He's talking about lies. My heart like beating its final right. beat, my lungs breathing their final... You'd be like, what the fuck is he... Is there something and then, wrong and then he him? dies, you know, he dies... Oh, yeah, but even... Warrior. Though, but my point is... Warrior's worth... Uh, my point is if you're watching a promo from anybody but Warrior and they're talking like that, it would something will click in you something where you're like... Click. But when we're watching that one on Monday night, nobody that's thought anything... Warrior. Because that's, that, that's how Warrior talks. That's, that's so it wasn't that out of place. But then when right. he died, you reflect back on it, and you're like, damn, that mother... He damn near wrote and, his and, own and, eulogy and, on live TV. Right, and let me say this. <clears throat> I came in after the news broke. And, and you know what? Listen. I'm a, Boone and I never been been shy, never been one to hold I'll, back. I'll, I'll and, tell him right I now what I said. Yeah. I understand that, <clears throat> you know... Bret Hart took a lot of criticism when he came out and he said, you know, along the lines of, hey, listen, you know, Warrior took steroids back in the day, and I don't know that Warrior ever stopped taking steroids up until the day that he died. When Warrior passed away, yeah. the news broke. Warrior passed away. The news broke. Um, I went back and listened to the promo. I came in here, and I said to Boone, and Boone agreed with me, I said, you Dude, I think he killed himself. I think the guy, like you said, oh, I, I came he into your room and said, "I got two words." I said, "If nobody else is going to say it, I'll say it." Suicide. It's one of two words, and and those two words were suicide and or 
overdose. Right. That was what immediately came to my mind. The guy was just on TV three nights in a row. We just saw him less than 24 hours ago. How the hell you, does he die the very next day? There That's are, too there coincidental. Are people, there are people, I mean, I, I don't care who you are. When that news broke, when that news broke on Tuesday night, and then you thought, you got thinking in your head, that Raw promo last night where he was talking about his heart beating, you know, its final moments, this, that, and the other thing, you can't tell me that the thought didn't cross your head. You may not have said it out loud, but the thought crossed your head. Did he Did he write his own eulogy well, I, on Raw and, and kill himself? Yeah. Uh, that's what... That's you what, can say that it didn't go through your head, because what I did was, as soon as it happened, I put the Rest in Peace Warrior thing on Facebook, right. and of course, tons of people are commenting, and I, like I told you when I went in your room, I came back in, I wrote it on Facebook as a comment on my own thing, I said, listen, if nobody else is going to say it, because nobody had said anything about it, I said, I'll say well, it, and a lot of people's responses were, maybe he knew he had a condition already. That's what I said. Yeah, and that's, that's what you said. So you, Yeah, I brought up the suicide, all this and that. Your thing was, well, maybe he knew he was real sick or had a real bad heart thing and knew, that that his, got to that. and knew that his days were limited, so it's not that shocking that right. he would talk like that and then die that well, soon after. And the reason that I had said that, as <clears> like we were talking about a couple of minutes ago, when he came out and shook the ropes, yeah. and he was gassed, and he was sweating, and you're like, yo, something looks... Not right. Something's like, off. Yeah. Something is off. So, did Warrior have a medical condition that was kept quiet? Only him yeah. and very close family members knew about. Where he knew that you know what. And then there are people saying that listen, Warrior had never. He was always against WWE. He was always against the Hall of Fame induction. And more okay? so than that, he was always critical of people who would talk trash like he would about WWE, and then, and then go back. And then go Maybe back. Maybe he knew, and that's why he wanted to go back, bury the hatchet, make so peace with everybody before his time was go. up. Right. And you were did the one, you were did, telling did, me all this, well, and while you were saying that, I'm still thinking suicide, this and that, and then it started, did, you would tell me this and that, and, and I'm and like, we, that we, makes sense too. We, we still don't know. The, the, the <clears throat> autopsy came out, the very early autopsy came out. I mean, the toxicology reports and everything yeah. else are going to take sometimes upwards of six months to come back and then at that point we'll find out did he have steroids in his body but, did he have drugs in his body that won't be out for another six months but the but very preliminary you can rule out suicide because he clearly right. died of a heart attack now did it did the heart attack happen as a result of of drug use of steroids uh, well past steroid drug use or was there drugs in his system, system. when he died like was he still doing the juice was he still doing any other kind of, of drugs we're not going to find that out for yeah. a while yeah that's what the uh, that's autopsy will tell toxicology us really. yeah, the toxicology once that comes back right. yeah so yeah but I mean he didn't kill himself he didn't kill himself so, it, the, it, so that just means that the timing not that it's funny I, I just can't help but laugh like not laugh but chuckle timing like that. the timing just, the fact that he died one day later right. I mean damn near 24 hours on the dot it was is like you said earlier it's eerie well, it, that's it, creepy the other, shit the other it makes thing, you think about life me, and God, and all that stuff you never know you really you get thinking never, when stuff like this happens never, you're no. like well, what are the odds well, let, me, let me ask you this though and, and listen yeah, we're speculating a little bit, but that's what, well, uh, that's whether, what we do. Yeah. whether you come out and whether you say it or not, you're thinking that self. And a lot of people, you know, it's the respectful thing to do is to just wait until the toxicology yeah. reports come back. Wait until Don't everything say anything comes definitive back. until you have the facts. But we're doing Absolutely. a show here. So. But but did Warrior? I mean, was there a reason? That Warrior returned to WWE and accepted the Hall of Fame offer, accepted the Raw offer, signed a deal with with WWE. Did he know something that we didn't know? Well, that where doctors not. may have told him you've only got this much time, or 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 was it just a freak heart attack? Which the autopsy, the very preliminary autopsy, came back yesterday and revealed that he suffered massive a massive heart major, condition or whatever they ma- call it. Massive heart attack. Heart, uh, Condition, whatever they catastrophic uh, heart disease, disease. right? Heart right. disease. So, right. oh yeah, that was the term. But um, maybe that's also why, like, you, like everything we were just saying. Plus, he signed that ambassador deal, which was a multi-year deal. Right. Some nice cash involved, so right. that his family would be financially taken care of once he's gone. Like, if like if we're going on your assumption that maybe he knew, kept it quiet, and this was a, only a private matter that him and his family were aware he of. Sign that deal. He made to sure, like, yo, all right, family. let me bury the hatchet, right. let me get back, let me sign this deal, get some money lined up so that my family's taken care of, 
you know, for what I don't know. I, I mean, no if idea. you were, if you were, if, if if you are terminally ill, I mean, you start here and you go down, 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 and then eventually, yeah, it gets know, worse and worse and worse. And you can tell your your time is up. Yeah, uh, eventually, especially if, like that, you said, that a doctor would tell him you've got so and so amount of time to live, six months, right. six to eight months. If he knows, all right, well, he said six to eight months, five months ago. I'm clearly getting worse as time goes on. Oh, I've only got a couple months left in if they're right. The fact Let me start doing all this stuff, getting everything lined up for my family. Right, and the fact that he was sweating and the fact that he couldn't really shake the ropes, I mean, I, we, we don't know. And then to, to suffer a massive heart attack like that, um, I, you know, and, and everybody, the fact is, is at, at the Hall of Fame, there were some people that were skeptical, you know, basically saying he didn't look all that good. He was sweating, yeah. uh, like you guys saw. Well, he addressed it too in his speech, right? Yeah. Right. And then, if you noticed, there was. I went back and watched the Hall of Fame, okay. And I said to you, "Well, watching the Hall of Fame, Warrior was the 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 main event, yeah. right? When he came out, okay, he looked to the right." And he looked way up, and he never looked out at the arena. He looked to the right, and he looked way up. And I'm like, why is he looking straight to the right and way up? Was I mean, it up? Because to the right, his family, up. his his two daughters, which no. we'll get to that in a minute, that is the saddest part of all this. Right. His two daughters and his wife, who we pointed out, brought to the stage, all this and that, they were sitting to the right. Right. But they weren't up. They were in no, the front row. No, no, no. You know? Normally, when you come out, you the arena's in front of you. When he came through the curtain, he looked to the right and he looked. Is that way those up. pictures, those famous pictures since he's died from one of the famous, photos? Is, he's is looking there. up and smiling, but he's looking up. He's yeah, right, with his head right. turned to the side. He's got it to the right. And That's the one I used. Way to up, it was way like up. A perfect picture of him, like just looking like real happy and you know. Smiling. And I, I, I kept thinking, why is he looking to the right and way up when the when the crowd? Is out here yeah, in, in front. In front. It, I mean, they're all over, but yeah, why specifically over there? I don't it know. Was, it what's was, your What's your point? I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know if, it, if that was looking to the heavens. I don't know. I, I mean, I he could look it. straight up for that or straight well, you up and out. When you come out through the curtain, you look at the the yeah, entire arena, the fifteen thousand people. He looked up to the right and then walked to the podium, which seemed it seemed out of place. It's, it's, I didn't know if you had like a, a, no, a speculation, a guess know. as to why. I, it just None? it seemed out of place when he came out <laughs> and uh, and looked to the right, but. Uh, so there was that, you know, and then the Hall of Fame speech, you know, once again, he had, here, he walked out and he had his two daughters walk out. And, and they're old during, enough to know what's going on. It's not like they're too young. They're 11 and 12, I think, or something like right, that. I know they're right. around that age, and that's a terrible... When the daughters walked him That's then, Haley. That's Haley. She's right. old enough if somebody does. She knows exactly what's going on. So bit, it goes a little from, bit older than It than goes Haley, from the right. greatest weekend ever for them to see their dad, because they weren't weren't alive when he was having his run. Right. Which we'll talk about his run as we get going on in this a little more, about how right. you know legendary and big of a figure he was. But they weren't alive for any of it. Right. So right. this is the first time they're getting to see, oh, my dad is an important fucking guy. Like, they've known it, but they haven't seen it firsthand. And also... And then, so they got all these great experiences. They're seeing this and that. They had a right. film crew following him the whole weekend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're seeing he's a big deal, he's a celebrity, and then that great weekend, that memorable weekend, ruined on uh, on Tuesday. Cause and now, every never time, every time anything. as they get older, they're going to look back at that weekend, and if this hadn't happened, they would always great look back weekend. at that weekend as an amazing, best, yeah, right. my great daddy, highlight of my, my daddy childhood. My daddy went into the Hall of Fame, yeah. my daddy was on Raw. A highlight of my childhood, and now right. instead, when they look back on this weekend, and when they get older, it's going to be like, that's going to be the most tragic, they might even that's block out a lot weekend, of it. Right. I, know, I have right. had a lot of shit in my life that I've right. gone through as a kid, and I I literally, you, I couldn't tell you all a single detail about any of it. I've blocked right. it all out of my head. I had okay. a counselor in school Absolutely. once tell me that that's my reaction to tragedy, is to block it out. And did, so they're going to be, that's going to Did you them up, see when, when, when the two kids, when it, when his two daughters brought him out on stage, and then they were down sitting in the audience yeah. with he the looked mother. He so proud, they uh, looked so proud. And he said in his Hall of Fame speech, he said, like you said, I know that you girls aren't old enough to remember what daddy did back in the day. Well, they weren't alive. They weren't alive no, back in the day. That well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's, that's what you said. But he said in the Hall of Fame speech, he says... I know you aren't, you're not old enough to remember what daddy did back in the day, but I want you to know that the best thing that has ever happened in my life is being a dad. 
to you, yeah. to the both of you girls. And you can tell he meant it. In the speech. Oh, my God, yeah, yeah. dude. And then... That's the know, part of the, of the tribute video that aired on Raw last night that right. really goddamn right. got me. Yeah, and I then, almost broke That's when there. we had said, you know, when, when listen, the initial reports broke, and, and like you <clears> and I were talking about, I said, I... Did he kill himself? Yeah. And then you got that the was thinking, one of the things you were telling me. You you're like, thinking, I don't think he would. He had those daughters. Wait a yeah. What about the girls? What about That's those what two little saying. girls? He yeah. loved those girls and his wife so much that it, I he wouldn't have done that. Yeah. But there are people out there that and have a family, this, that, and the other thing. They, they love their kids. They love their wife. But there's something that just fucks that them up emotionally them that right. they can't that people aren't even aware of that's in their own in their head right that they can I can love some, you know you can love your kids very much this and that but you could still it, be uh, depressed as shit right and it, it happens many people might not even know it it know? happens all the time in this <coughs> world where you know men and women have families and you know that they they've got kids look at the Chris little Benoit kids thing. right Chris Benoit he obviously um, loved his kids very much you know what I mean right, but right. obviously he could still I mean I don't even want to say more than that. You can you tell where I'm going right. there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. With the swimming pool and everything else, you know. It, it swimming was pool. Just, well, he went swimming with the kid and then strangled his, strangled his own kid. Oh, I didn't know that he was swimming with I knew he, he smothered him with a pillow, right? Yeah, the Benoit thing. Benoit had yeah. killed. And Benoit, he hung himself with his weights or something. Benoit had killed Nancy. And then... Oh, that's right. And then for a whole day or something. Benoit had killed Nancy like 24 hours prior. About that. Wow. Then took his son, uh, Daniel... Right? Yeah. Then took his son Daniel, went in the swimming pool, swam and played with him, then came in had and, one last, you know and smothered him with a pillow and then went and hung himself in the uh, in the basement. So just saying that is I mean can you that's I can't believe it. He that. went he went swimming with the kid while the mother is inside the home dead and he's out in the swimming pool swimming with the kid. Yeah. That's the the mind of a psychopath, man. If you're if you're able to I mean, obviously, the mindset I'm thinking would be, let me have one more moment with my son before I do what I have to do here, because if I don't do it, cops are going to show you eventually, people are going to wear Nancy. Right, he, yeah. right. And not to he get off had track. a plan. He had a plan the entire time, and I think he wanted to take the family with him, where he felt that, I'm going to heaven. I mean, guys should be in hell. Yeah. But if well, I'm he's, going... He's that, in hell if there's a heaven and hell. If man. there's a heaven and hell, he should yeah. be in hell. He, he didn't make it. God didn't say, come on in. in. No, but no. Uh, I think he wanted to take the family with him. Where he yeah. says, if I'm going, I want these guys going with him. Yeah. Which is just terrible. But, uh, but, but listen, back to, I mean, Warrior... And people said it. This, uh, the word thing, exact opposite Piper, of the Benoit thing. Couldn't right, be more different. Absolutely. Yeah. Piper had contacted me on Twitter and said, Hey, Ryan, be nice, be respectful, the warrior. And then I got a, a direct message the hell is from that Piper. Thing? I got a, like You I wouldn't got, be nice so, or respectful? What the hell is he saying? Of course I'm going to yeah, be. Yeah, what know? does he think? But I got a DM from uh, Piper, and he said, Dude, he loved those girls so much they were his life and yeah. the wife and the two kids he loved those girls and so much and 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 i'll uh, say this from watching i because you know i've watched every dvd every documentary anything that is wwe's produced or outside people have produced any documentary dvd any behind the scenes anything that exists i've seen mm -hmm. if i'm the ranked fan, guys in the business that love their families mm -hmm. with knowledge i have too of why piper would take hiatus isn't it Hi piper loves his family Oh my more God. than anyone, because you got it, it makes a lot there of sense. Nobody he that was loves a, their family more than Piper. Yeah, well, that's not. I mean, probably, there's other people that love us equally, but you, you can't you're love right. a family. You're you right. can't love a family more than Roddy Piper loves right. his family, or Roderick Toon, whatever you want to call him. Right. He he was an orphan as a kid growing up, so he didn't have a real family. So the wrestling business became his real family, and then he got a family of his own. He was always so proud to say, because of the WWE and my career, blah, 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 you, you allowed me to I have the money to support, to support right. two children, three children, whatever he's got, uh, mm -hmm. Colt, uh, Anastasia. Uh, Colt, Colt's the uh, the wrestler, right? Yeah, he, Colt Toons or whatever. Right. But yeah, Anastasia is the oldest, I think. She's, he can kick my ass if he hears it. She's kind of hot, man. She's a good looking girl. Uh, and then he's got grandkids too, no I believe. No comment. He's got grandkids too, I believe, because in one of the videos where I'm picturing the Anastasia uh, daughter of his, she's holding the baby, right. you know, so yeah, and you could just see the look he's, in his eyes when he's with his family in the he DVD, he looks so, so proud. He is, yeah. he is, he, he's just a, a he, yeah, he, he is the family man of Big all fam family men, um, but, you know, Warrior, the, the, the thing with Warrior is, is those kids, you feel so bad 
for those two girls, man, and his wife as well. And not only that, but the wife. I mean, think about this. The poor wife Widow. is walking down the hallway with him, and all of a sudden, it uh, sounds terrible because it is. I tell Tim. Warrior yeah. stops, clutches Clasp. his chest, yeah. and drops to the ground, and they can't revive him at the and hospital. And something, too, was going and to the car. Wife, that's when Tim, my stepdad, passed, he was walking to the car, clutched his chest, uh, chest collapsed and died right there <coughs> on the cement in front of everyone. My sister and my mom. I wasn't there. Right? I was up here with you at the time. I know. And uh, when I, because I went back to be there for the funeral, I was there 24 hours later to, because they none of them were. He was to yeah, provide, yeah, so I, I had know. to stay I in know. Florida and provide for my family. But as, as graphic as this Can is going to sound, there was still blood stains. Because when you collapse, your head hits the ground. Right, obviously, right, right. so his, he bled all over the. Can the you imagine driveway. the wife? Just think about his wife, man. Who, well, they got to live with that image forever. The wife, that was the, the thing. wife is talking to him minutes before yeah. as they're walking down the hallway, talking to him like like everything is is fine. That's what I was going to get to. And then he stops and clutches. Yeah. His that is going to be a, an image that exactly. is going to stay in her head for the rest of her life. That's that torture. minutes before she's going to have this, nightmares, dreams, the whole thing. That minutes before this, were, they were they were fine. They were fine, and then it, yeah. just like that, just like it's. That's what he said. I wrote in the column, life's man. precious, you never know when, it, you know, your time, you know, but, uh... I can, uh, yeah. That's what I was going to say, was I, I wasn't there when it happened with my stepdad, but I remember thinking, because they would, my sister was so strong to go think she's, because my mom was a wreck. Can it's, I go get my six? Can yeah, you, you didn't break them. Right, no, they're not. That's, that's not that. Yeah, there. go ahead. Well, anyways, as I was saying, my mom was a wreck, but my sister, and she saw it too, I couldn't even do the funeral arrangements, making the phone calls and shit like that. I just didn't want to talk to them. I didn't want to deal with nobody. My sister who saw it, she's dead. she's staying strong for the family. She's doing I mean, I'm doing the financial side, but she's doing the phone calls, the talking to this funeral person, this memorial whatever person and yeah, but the, my point being is they had the image of seeing it happen. I just right. I just have the knowledge that it happened. I didn't have to see any of it, thank God. But I couldn't imagine if I'm Ultimate Warrior's wife, like you said, to your point, they're walking, everything's fine one minute. And then, and then, bam, that's, and she has the visual. I hope, I haven't heard, the kids weren't there. The kids weren't there. Thank the God, because that, I that know. especially at that age, that will fucking torment you for well, They said yeah. that uh, Warrior, Warrior had flown out of New Orleans on Tuesday morning, okay, because Raw was Monday yeah. night. He was at the airport at 6 a.m., um, the New Orleans airport, yeah. at 6 a.m. on Tuesday morning. He had a layover. I can't remember the city. I think it was somewhere in Texas, but he had a layover en route to Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, people that, or Scottsdale, Scottsdale, Scottsdale yeah. Arizona. Um, so people that were at the airport, the New Orleans airport, on Tuesday morning, there were some photos. Some fans had put up yeah, photos the saying last photo that, of him alive, that kind of thing. Yeah, I had met Warrior at 6 a.m. at the airport on Tuesday morning, and he seemed fine. Um, and it was him and his wife that you know were were en route to Scottsdale. Now, why he was staying in a in a hotel in Scottsdale where he, he lives? Was, he lives in Arizona. Well, he's got a house there, and he's got a house somewhere else. I forget where, but he's got a house in Scottsdale. So maybe it was a, a long drive to where from the, the maybe, airport. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he arrived in Scottsdale. He lives in Phoenix, right? I think he lives. I don't in know. Phoenix. I know it's in Arizona somewhere. I could swear it was Scottsdale actually that he lives. I thought he flew into Scottsdale. Maybe he flew into Phoenix and then he had to drive home to Scotts Maybe. Scotts or something like that. But he flew out on Tuesday morning. Some fans took some photos of him in the uh, in the airport, and everything seemed fine there. Um, and then it comes down to hey. I, did the flight do something? Well, Did listen. All the stress from WrestleMania and Access Weekend, all that stress that, that it could build be, up that could be and then of cause it. a heart attack. Not in like, addition to we that. We keep reiterating you know, everything was fine and then bad, but a heart attack is not like a slow coming of thing. Like a heart attack is something no, that just not, happens, it happens and boom. It happens. Yeah, Absolutely. so it's not like, oh, he was suffering from a heart attack for a <coughs> and then no. finally he went. No, yeah. I mean, it's going to be sudden, everything's fine and then sudden. But, but stress. <clears throat> Can lead up yeah, to yeah, a heart yeah. attack if you have added a toll added pressure heart, sure, yeah. and added stress. I mean, the blood pressure like escalating right, will affect right. the heart. All that Absolutely. stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but uh, so uh, you know everything happened on uh, <laughs> Tuesday afternoon. Now, thank God that his kids weren't around when it happened, and you would think that the kids were in New Orleans. So you would have thought that the kids would have flown home with Warrior. So who and were his the kids with? 
I don't know. I don't know where the kids were, but they weren't there. I just the wife they were flown home early, but like maybe, maybe they flew home early. We said they were in New like Orleans. That. They were in New Orleans, but did they fly happen? home on Monday or something like that before he cut the raw promo? Warrior and his wife flew home on Tuesday. So where the kids went? Oh, I thought you said on Tuesday between, when it happened, the kids were still in New Orleans. The kids were in New Orleans over the WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, where they were, they were at the where they were on Tuesday when it happened, they weren't there. Yes, yeah, but you don't know if good. they were back home or in still in. New I don't Orleans. know. Okay. I don't know. I would, I, my assumption would be they, they the kids got sent home early and then yeah they. Well, were. Uh, that may have been it, but it, it was the fact that Warrior and his wife flew home on on Tuesday morning. The kids weren't with them, so no. Just in my opinion, and being a, uh, a person who's constantly thinking when we're doing a show of what's. Good right. taste. What's this? I think we've covered the tragedy part of right. everything that happened. I think mm-hmm. now we celebrate. We got to look back and celebrate you know, life. life award. I mean, no doubt. Do you want to take a break first? Come back and do this. This stuff. That's um. What do we got? We ten minutes until we take the commercial break. A, a couple other notes that I uh, that I you know. Well, just, well, real quick, what did you think? Because I've addressed it a few times. What did you think of the video package? I want to talk about Nancy Grace. Is what I want that's to talk related about. too. Yeah, that's right. more of negative stuff. So we'll do that now then. Yeah, right. and then right. we'll get into the hour. And then we'll get all the we'll, positive. We'll remember him. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're so, thinking we're doing so, a show on the fly. We were planning know, on doing a regular show. We were gonna so. we were gonna do raw and everything else, but uh, we do. I we want we never to have do, any plans. We just get on the I know. And go. You know? <laughs> we want to do a warrior tribute show, and that's what we're giving you tonight. And then listen, tomorrow night we're gonna come back uh, our normal Tuesday night show that we normally do. We're gonna do it a day late. Try to get this computer fixed, and uh, we'll run down Monday Night Raw from last night. We'll do your rapid fire. We'll take your live phone calls and everything else. Not only that, but I know we don't have the uh, the phone lines open right now for you guys to call for <coughs> talk about Warrior. But tomorrow night, if you if you guys have we any Warrior to, thoughts, yeah, or, I guess or we should like that. Yeah, let's around. not let's okay. not fuck with it. Well, plus um, we got the Jeff Jarrett stuff to talk about. There's the uh, Jeff Jarrett. Right. There was a UFC. A lot of post WrestleMania. News, yeah, that bro. stuff. There was the UFC with Nogueira and Big Country. There was the Pacquiao. Fight. Like, there's a bunch of stuff we get to. coming back. Yeah, it's look ahead to extreme rules. There's a bunch of stuff. <coughs> Diamond Dallas Page went on uh, Nancy Grace and listen. Did you see the you segment? No, I saw. The I didn't segment. see the segment. It was only about a six, seven, eight minute clip. Yeah. Um, but I heard Nancy Grace is the type of person where she is not shy, and a lot of people. She's hate what I would Nancy call Grace. a tabloid journalist. She what if if Nancy Grace whatever Nancy Grace feels. She comes out and she says exactly what is on her mind. And if you don't agree with it, you are wrong in her opinion. Yeah. If you a don't typical agree, arrogant with, journalist right. thinks they know everything. Yeah. If you don't agree with what Nancy Grace says, then you are wrong. But, she's right. You're wrong. Yeah. No matter what. I mean, more so than that, though, she's also seems to really crave and like being. Doing controversial she topics. She loves it. She Anything loves that's controversial, it. hot button issue, whatever the fuck. Right. She loves that shit. Because yeah, obviously I it's a cheap her, ratings get. The Casey you know? Anthony trial, which, mm-hmm. listen, I think Casey Anthony is as guilty as anybody else, but they found her not guilty. She did went you watch on the movie they did on her? On, I haven't. No. Mm-hmm. No. She went on and on about Casey Anthony. And basically, she. The way to put it, Nancy Grace convicts people before they're convicted. Yeah. She convicts them before they're convicted. She did the same uh, thing with the Trayvon Martin stuff. Anything that's real controversial, she jumps all over it. Why? Because that's the hot jumps topic. On it. It's the hot topic. That's the and, easy and, way to get ratings. Oh, I'm talking about this controversial right. thing. And, and there are all these, you know, change.org, fire Nancy Grace, all the WWE fans. Movements. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Nancy Grace has probably had a million different petitions filed against yeah. her. CNN, well, like said, MSNBC, whatever it is, get Nancy Grace off the air. It's well, not going to work if it didn't yeah, work. Yeah, how that's many people? The point. How many Trayvon Martin people do you think said fire Nancy Grace? How many Casey Anthony? This people isn't said, her first controversial thing. Yeah, that's no, that's what. Making. That's why MSNBC or CNN, whatever network, shit, they CNN, love it. I don't know. They love it. Because she brings in ratings because people hate this woman Maybe so much. No, they it. hate her so much that people tune in just to despise yeah. this woman. Same like Bill O'Reilly they or her. That's Sean why Hannity. The network has, right. That's yeah. why the network has her on air because she, she, she creates controversy. She gets people talking. She gets but people... To the people who don't know what the, the whole Nancy Grace thing is, because I did pay attention this time, you haven't really explained... 
Nancy, so DDP, was so on. DDP okay. um, comes on the show, and DDP Two came real out in an controversial interview. things coming out of the appearance. Well, the DDP, one was the lawyer stuff, the other was... DDP came on the show, and he had said that prior to the show going live, he was told that it was going to be more of a warrior tribute, where they were going to look back yeah, on the like warrior's career. And I think the first sentence, <laughs> or the second sentence... Out of Nancy <coughs> Grace's mouth was, well, we know that all these, you know, former pro wrestlers, they've died of steroids. And then she kept going back on the point of steroids, 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 steroids. At one point, she scrolled a list. A list was scrolling down, and she says, well, we've got this list of wrestlers who have all died of steroids. Of young, young, yeah, guys who've died young. Of Half people. of them. Hadn't even died of steroids. Half died young. That's not fair. Not half, but maybe there was 20%. one glaring, one glaring name on the list that was just bullshit. Right. Which right. was uh, Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Okay. Who died falling out of his fucking? She had a list of she, names. That he were was part of a list that, and I don't know if it was a list. I'll have to watch the appearance because I've heard conflicting reports on this, and, and if you've seen it, you should remember. The list scrolled up and down. It was a list of being, twenty names. There was two different things I heard. The list was. Described as what this list is. A, I heard the list was described as this is a list of wrestlers who've died young. B, this is a list of wrestlers who've died young from steroids. Right. Which right. was it? Was it just here's a list of wrestlers who died I, young, I, I, or I was think... it these are guys who died young specifically because of steroid or drug related issues? Because now it's probably it... a list of wrestlers who have died young. But see, the way the heart... she went into it, yeah. she kept emphasizing steroid but, use. Steroids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but well, no, that was the two things. No, the one, just to do a real quick summary of the segment, the real controversies, there were two. One, why is there tape all over his leg? Oh, we used to tape this one. Yeah. The, the two things. One was she harped way on the fact, like you said, that Warrior's death might be related to steroid use. She B, over it, over it, yeah, over it. really emphasized it, drove yeah. the point home. The other thing was Owen Hart on that list, and the original story I had heard was that this is a list of wrestlers who died from steroids or drugs, and obviously Owen Hart's death was a tragedy, he fell in an accident, yeah. had nothing to do with drugs. So if he was on a list that was described as that, then that's bullshit. Then that's bad bullshit, because that's just right. bad journalism. It right. takes two seconds to know research, and obviously that's a story people should know. It was a big news story outside the wrestling world. It was a major media story. B, if it was a list of wrestlers who just died young and not of steroid use, then on heart, I guess, I mean, he died young, but to even include him in that is like, well, what the fuck? It was a coincidence that he died young. It was an accident. It was an accident. Yeah. It fell from the ceiling yeah. at the uh, there was no the, way out. The quick release were, mechanism whatever or whatever, was, yeah, and his, right. his harness or whatever the fuck. That has nothing right. to do with Kemper Arena, right? Yeah, Kemper exactly. Arena? Man, man. But, uh, no, so DDP came out today and said that uh, he almost walked off the set. He almost got up and said, "Listen, I'm not doing this." You guys, yeah, told he issued me. a statement yesterday. Yeah, a couple days ago, right? Monday, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, well, no, was it yesterday? Well, it had been yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Yesterday's Monday. I thought it was. Or maybe it was Sunday. When was the segment? I didn't see it. Oh, the segment aired last Thursday, Friday. Oh, no, that didn't sound right. It had to About Friday. No, it was Thursday or Friday. Okay. It was, thir it was during. I thought it Nancy was Grace doesn't air during Sunday. the weekend. I she thought it doesn't was, air during okay. the weekend. Okay. So it had to have been Thursday. Or I think it was. Thir I think it was. I want to say Thursday. It was the night Impact was on. It was Thursday. It was Thursday. Okay. But uh, he. he God, came, we got to talk about that tomorrow too. Jesus. Yeah, he came out. Yeah, with uh, Eric Young's yeah. uh, TNA title win. Um, <coughs> doing the same thing they did with uh, Daniel Bryan. But you know what? WWE, You're gonna get off on a tangent here. <coughs> WWE and TNA copy all dice. Uh, listen, Kane is coming back with the mask next week on Raw. Yeah. I remember Abyss, a couple of Abyss coming back a couple of weeks ago. Kane back and Daniel Bryan used to be paired together. Abyss and Eric Young were paired together. They take ideas from each other. It's not. It's <laughs> no, I know, and that's it's always done in wrestling. There's no real original idea left. So DDP came out and basically said, "I almost walked off the show because they had told me coming into the show that it was going to be more of a tribute type yeah. show." And then he's sitting. Um, um, and then he's sitting there and just, you know, she kept saying steroids, 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 yeah. steroids. Now, you know, and, and to DDP's credit, I mean, he was great. Um, basically, he kept going back to WWE's got one of the best wellness policy programs, you know, well ahead of the NFL, NHL, MLB. Um, they're one of the cleanest sports in the business now. They test these guys inside and out, this, that, and the other thing. He kept trying to bring it back yeah. to hey you know wrestling you, is 
You mentioned earlier that we're very uh, open, honest on the show. We speak our minds where others might not. And the only thing I keep thinking when you keep Uh-oh. talking about DDP, and it might be controversial, <laughs> I'm about to say. Where are you going? The only thing that I keep thinking when you say DDP, blah, 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 this and that on, on the segment, what do you think of wrestlers? Because I, I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Was DDP great friends with Ultimate Warrior? What the fuck is he doing? I don't think he was. Yeah, so it's like, what, is there a, a, is this possible? Is it possible that wrestlers, when controversies happen, just want to be on a mainstream TV show to do a fucking... I could understand if DDP was on Nancy Grace <sighs> and at the end of the segment, either him or Nancy Grace had said, oh, by the way, uh, there's a DVD in stores, DDP Yoga, something like that, and to plug something or just to get your name out there is what you're... Yeah, a lot of guys are marks for themselves, so name. being on a fucking mainstream network show or big cable show, whatever, Well, I could see that where it's like, what, what, what... If you're not really well, connected I, I, to the guy that the story's about, if you're not friends with Warrior, if you weren't a good friend of Warriors, are you qualified? How do we know that Nancy Grace, the first person she called was Diamond Dallas Page, and he said, okay, I'll do it? We we don't know. I mean, yeah. maybe Nancy only contacted DDP and nobody else. As a journalist, and, if you were contacted... Said, well, that's different. Cause if I was contacted, I would, find somebody, I would find somebody... No, that see, had close ties. I would take to the booking because, as a journalist, we're spo- and we do know about we we do our research. We we reach, we follow the stories. We're supposed to be educated enough to speak on any topic involved in our business of wrestling. So, if they say we need a journalist point of view for the segment, are you educated on the subject? I would, I would contact, say, yeah, I'm educated on the subject. I would you know. contact the people that I had thought were closest to Warrior. No, no, no. If, if I could get all of them, if they wanted a journalist, I, I understand. I understand, but from his point of view, you don't need to be close to him to be able to say, "Here's the news behind." If, it. if I'm the, if I'm Nancy Grace and I want a guest on yeah. my show, I TDP want a pro wrestler. Journalist. Right. If, if I'm Nancy Grace, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I wanted a guest on on my show um, to talk about somebody, the Ultimate Warrior who had just died, yeah. I would go out and try to. I no, I didn't. Got him <laughs> in the pocket. Forgot the lighter though. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're back here for our numero dos. We're going to give you about a half an hour. Um, new WWE title, title match now for uh, Extreme Rules. It's going to be AJ Lee against uh, Paige for the uh, WWE Divas title, like we said. And uh, also going to get the Raw script up after we go off the air here tonight. We're going to put it up on WZRonline.com, the complete Raw script from last night's show. Also, we're going to be here tomorrow night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time, WZRonline.com. You're going to get your regular Tuesday night show. You're going to recap Monday Night Raw from WZR last TV night. TV Wednesday. WZR TV Wednesday. We're going to recap Monday Night Raw from <laughs> last night. Also talk all the backstage news and rumors from the past week. Jeff Jarrett, what happened over the weekend with uh, him and Karen Jarrett. Eric Young, TNA stuff. A lot of drama. Just, uh, yeah, Eric Young winning the uh, TNA World Heavyweight title. Pacquiao on fight. Impact. Pacquiao big fight. Night, big country. I got the scorecard still in there where we can talk about that a little yeah. bit. Uh, we scored it. Matt Boone and I both uh, scored it. So... Uh, For the next half hour, we're going to be talking with you guys about the Ultimate Warrior. This is kind of our Ultimate Warrior tribute show. Kind of. Broke down the sad part um, in our numero uno. The sad and controversial stuff. Yeah, Yeah, we're going to be uh, looking back on uh, the Ultimate Warrior's career. Now, you go back in the days of the 80s and the 90s. Not so much the 80s. I mean, I was watching, but I don't really remember a lot. Now, I can tell you, I remember based on rewatching as I got older. I had a massive tape collection, and my buddy, or my mom's buddy, I should say, Pat, this guy that was like, when I was... How old have I been? Whatever, 14, 15, 16, somewhere around there. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a great memory. I was in my teens and he was in his 30s, but he had, this, he was a big fucking nerd. Uh, like an old nerd. nerd? Yeah, like a, like a quintessential Revenge of the Nerds character type of guy. No offense if he's watching, hopefully, but, uh, because he's a big enough nerd that he might be a fan <laughs> of the show. But, uh, yeah, he had this enormous tape collection. I mean, fucking massive. And I right. would borrow tapes from him all the time and stuff. And he had a list. Right. And the running gag with uh, my house, I would always get him to say, because I would ask him about wrestling. He loved talking wrestling, so I would always, I would just, I would know off the top of my head a famous match that happened at, say, Survivor Series. And after a while, because he had a list, but Survivor Series is how he would say it. <laughs> so after a while, after a while, after a while, he realized I was trying to just 
specifically against the Survivor Series because he, he signed a flame when he lisped and we'd all laugh at him. Right. That would bad. But uh, that was the Boone <laughs> household going on. But uh, yeah, so I would like to, hey, what, when, what pay-per-view was that, that blah, blah, blah versus blah, blah, blah match? Go, oh, that was a 1996 Survivor Series. And we'd all start laughing. Oh, you asshole! You know, but uh, but uh, yeah. So he had a massive tape collection. I'd borrow, watch, blah 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 blah. Long story short, I my knowledge of wrestling goes back to late seventies, early eighties. Mm. And even though I was born eighty four, I can tell you about stuff long before I was born. And I was watching from the. I mean, the, the when you're born, you get like a gift. I guess as a tradition. Mm. My gift was I think it was a, a Larry Zabisco doll. So mm-hmm. they got me like a wrestling doll as my gift. Right. So, I mean, I'm watching from the crib. You know what I mean? Like, right. we got yeah. uh, Little Man. What's his name? Um, got the action figures wait, now. Wait, what the hell is his name? I forget. I keep wanting to say Caden. It's a. Uh, Jacob. Uh, Jacob. Jacob. Oh. Oh. Like, we got Jacob doing watching the wrestling at this yeah. age. Like, oh, they, yeah. had, they oh, trained yeah. me from that age, and yeah. I stuck with it. And All I've the been way watching my entire life. Yeah, right, so. Yeah, right. And I'm as old as WrestleMania. WrestleMania is so, 85, I was 84. Long story short, though, yeah, he, he started in 85, was his debut. And I'm sorry, you were going to say something. No, I was just going to say, I mean, we can get into it where nobody, I mean, everybody knows this. Nobody liked Warrior back in the day. Nobody liked Warrior. Well, Max nobody in the business. business. Nobody in the business. Fans loved him. Fans yeah. loved him. I mean, I remember my father would take me to WWE events and Warrior would come running out, this, that, and the other Did, thing. Did you went to shows back in the uh, day? Oh, yeah. Pops take me uh, right here, man. Down I would go to, see, WWE, yeah, you're in New York yeah, still. Or right yeah. Newer, up in You'd the go Northeast. to WCW. I was NWA. Right. NWA. I was NWA. In NWA. WCW, WCW, yeah. Right. Yeah, I would go to the Southern stuff. Yep. They would come to the Baltimore Arena a lot and stuff like that. And I lived in Maryland, you know. So. Yep. Uh, but, you know, I mean, the backstage feeling was that this guy was an asshole. Uh, he didn't interact with many people backstage, didn't have a lot of friends, uh, came, basically collected his paycheck, and that was it. I you think know, he was one of the guys like Hogan, I want to see Savage, but I don't want to, don't quote me that. that had, ego. Well, that too, but that had his own dressing room. Right. Like, it's, right. it's known that most, most real, like, Jim Ross, one of his first duties as uh, head of talent relations was to get rid of the... the, the the separate dressing rooms. Mm-hmm. He says that causes frictions backstage, jealousy, right. envy, this and that. Right. He got rid of that shit. So even in the big attitude there, Austin and Rock were with everybody else. With everybody I else, believe. Right. I don't know. That might have changed as as time went on a little bit. But long story short, yeah, back then, like guys like Hogan, Warrior, Savage would have their own. They would separate themselves. They weren't one of the boys, quote unquote. Do you know that WWE, <laughs> uh, um, as of now, and I just found out this uh, a couple of weeks ago, WWE, as far as tour buses are concerned, some guys have them, some guys yeah. don't. Well, they pay a w- yeah. The WWE talents pay a fee. I muted your phone. Why is that making noise? Oh, I'm more? sorry. My bad. You unmuted it? You can went, I say that you it went is... You out of your way to unmute Can I say that it is snowing like crazy yeah, out right now, man? In mid-April. What do we got, about an inch out there now? Uh, almost an inch. Getting there. Almost it's going to be when it's done at least. But uh, WWE talents pay a fee to rent the tour buses. WWE well, run them will provide the tour buses, but yeah. WWE pays. WWE charges these guys a rental fee. Pay the driver. To, the, to rent out the, the uh, They've got to pay the driver. They've got to pay. You've got to. Nobody is handed a bus and says, mm-hmm. hey, you're a big enough name. You're John Cena or you're Big Show or somebody like that. You get your own tour bus. You they've got to pay a goes, rental. Yeah. They've got to pay a rental fee to get those buses. So. Big Show can afford it. Cena can afford it. Cena can uh, afford it. Daniel Bryan's got one. As, as no, well, he so. did. He, I think he maybe he got it again. If you watch Total Divas, they cover that storyline. Bree convinced him to get one, and then they it became. He the, says that he didn't want one. It right? became the party bus because right. they would let every Total Diva right. chick right. and right. their right. boyfriends on the bus, and the, there was two rules: no shitting, no sex on the bus. Right. right. Both of those were broken, and it was only for a weekend trip that they were doing. They had a bunch of different shots to make, and they were like, well, let's get a bus for it. But yeah, he uh, he said he couldn't wait to be done with the Allison bus. Allison says, oh my fucking God, are you serious with this shit? She must have looked outside. Yeah. But no, you're right. I I don't know if Daniel Bryan is still... But uh, yeah, we were, that all became... But, we were talking about the, the was, seclusion. Yeah, yeah right. Warrior was not one of the boys, so to speak. So yeah, mm-hmm. he had a lot of people that didn't care for him too much right. backstage, and a lot of people that flat out hated his guts because he yeah, was... Yeah, a lot of people did, man. Listen, it depends on whose stories you listen to and it's really, if, if fans out there have seen the self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior DVD, the first one that WWE but put WWE out... But WWE kind of trashed him that, that DVD, That's my right? point. That okay. was a hatchet job. So okay. if you're, like, thinking that this is all a shoot, everything on that DVD, because it really came off as a shoot, the way right. the guys were talking, yeah. a lot of that shit was bullshit. Right, like, right. They would really WWE, go out of their way to toilet him. WWE yeah. went and trashed him and that's why... 
He was so happy about the next DVD that's about to it's debut out. later this. I thought it's it was out. coming out. No, it's okay. Out. It's out. It's out yeah. um, but he was already, he was a big part of that. <laughs> where you know he did interviews. He went to Titan Towers. Yeah. So they came to him and they filmed. It. By the way, uh, WWE rented a home for Warrior o- over WrestleMania uh, 30 weekend. And they filmed his last days. They rented a house for him and the family. They flew him in, and then whenever he needed to get from where he was staying in yeah. the rental house, they would send a limo or an SUV or something like that yeah. and provide him transportation. They provided all food, all that stuff for him. And they filmed the last days, which I believe... He had a camera crew following him, I think, 24-7. I Maybe think not when he's sleeping and stuff like the, that, like the, while he was out in public. The plan was to air that footage on the WWE Network. Now, did well, they still do that? That and stuff then, you should run down because I don't really have the notes in my the head. Plan, the plan the was to stuff. air all the footage on the four WWE part. Network. Uh, well, they're, they're going to do a four-part series whether that contains the footage that they shot over WrestleMania I'm sure it weekend. is because one of the, if you right. looked at the uh, descriptions, one was, uh, I think they're doing a round table, like a Legends of WrestleMania kind right. of round table right. about Warrior. They're doing a, a, a new biography on him. Well, right. I would assume that would be the footage because they also Vince. did a Daniel Bryan, My Road to WrestleMania documentary. I watched that right. the other night. Real good. It was like a mix of kayfabe and shoot, but it was really good. Triple H came out and said <clears> that uh, he had been negotiating with the Ultimate Warrior for 18 months, almost two years. Over to a get, year, yeah. To get the return to happen uh, for the Hall, Hall of Fame, Fame yeah. and, and Raw and everything else. Uh, you know, 18 months is what Triple H had said, uh, and then it finally came to fruition yeah. where they Which, were able to get him. It's really ironic, like too. That. It's really it's ironic, too. Considering that, uh, what was the word? I missed it. Fruition. Fruition? That's a good word. Uh, Well, I I think it's ironic because Triple H was one of the guys who went. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It was, he wasn't, (laughs) I don't think Triple H was part, well, you know what? They aired the same interview I'm about to describe. It was, I think it was WrestleMania 2000, I want to say. They had this all, Atlantis Morris. Yes. They had this all day thing about, um, the history of WrestleMania and they had interviews and this and that and stuff like that. Some of them can, some of them live. But I, I remember Triple H, because Triple H wrestled Ultimate Warrior, and I believe this was Ultimate Warrior's last. Really? When was this? This was Ultimate Warrior's last WrestleMania. It was like WrestleMania 12, WrestleMania. It was a WrestleMania match. WrestleMania 12, WrestleMania yeah. 13, something like that. But Warrior didn't want to do anything because Triple H wanted to have a match, match like some time. Mm-hmm. Warrior says no, 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 because it was it was like a, a surprise return, I think, or like a first match back kind of thing. Either way. The match went like 40 seconds. Wanted to come out and destroy him. Warrior came out and squashed him. And it was Triple H's first ever WrestleMania. Right. So he was like, man, what the fuck? This is my first WrestleMania, and I get to fucking be a jobber for this match. The fact that Triple H didn't have all the power that he's got now. Same kind of thing with CM Punk is like, these guys are just going to walk in and take the top spot. Mm -hmm. Triple H is like, this fucking guy isn't even part of the company. He's coming back, and I got a job. Triple H at this point was pretty much a jobber. He was. Getting to no, the he point was a where pre- still pretty yeah. much. I mean, he. I don't think he had won the King of the Ring yet or right. any of that stuff that you know right. he would go on to do. But uh, but yeah, yeah, he's talking in his interview during the All Day WrestleMania special about how Warrior was a dick. He didn't want to do right. business. He was a selfish guy. This and that. Right. And then it's ironic that he's the guy who had to kiss Warrior's ass for I the know. last eighteen months to get him to come back. Get him back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no Same doubt. Same way he did with Bruno, although um, he didn't have history with Bruno. Vince was really shaken up um at wwe sent two top agents uh senior management officials to arizona uh for the ultimate warrior's wife uh dana i believe her name is dana yeah, yeah, yeah. i think it's um, dana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh sent them out to arizona basically to do babysitting for the kids grocery shopping things like that well they worked out the funeral arrangements you know, uh, and everything else um, you know piper's wife's name i don't kitty kitty Kitty. I think so, yeah. All right, no doubt. Um, That's what but, uh, was stuck in my So they sent uh, two <clears throat> top senior management officials to Arizona to help with, like I said, the grocery shopping and the babysitting and everything else. Yeah. Well, you know, Dana and, and everybody else kind of mourned and did the funeral arrangements yeah. and everything else. So they were uh, they were sent there. So back in Warriors. So right. nobody liked him. Some of his, uh, his top matches... Uh, back in the day, we all know Hulk Hogan and, and Warrior. I mean, that's one of the... Yeah, but I mean, his top rivals would be... I mean, his top match ever has to be the, the Hogan match. The Hogan Sky match. Dome, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, WrestleMania 6. The, the, the what dome? The Sky Dome. Oh, the Sky not Dome. Not the Silver Dome. Not the no. Silver Dome. Not the, the Super, Super Dome. Not the no. Super Dome, right? It right. was the Sky Dome, Toronto, Ontario, <laughs> Canada. In fact, Edge was in the crowd. Oh, yeah? They got that picture of him wearing the Hulk Rule shirt and everything. He was in the okay. crowd. Renee right. Young was in the crowd. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was like... Boy, the, Renee Young must have been... 
Young real as shit. Real little. Yeah. Real little. I mean, yeah. but I remember her saying on one of the rest, the 30 Years of WrestleMania podcast, WWE sure, did the podcast once. She, she was interviewing somebody because she was doing all the interviews for the podcast. And she right. was like, yeah, I was there too. Yeah. I think it was Foley she was talking to. But yeah, yeah, she said she was there. So Yeah. But, um... Yeah, he, he. If you're looking at his top rivals, you got it. The top match has to be that one, the Hogan WrestleMania six. Right. But Hogan, uh, uh, Savage WrestleMania Macho, six. Macho, yeah, okay. and Macho Man uh, Randy Savage WrestleMania seven. Uh-huh. Uh, retirement match. That I remember that one very vividly. It was uh, Warrior versus Macho King. Mm-hmm. This was when he was the Macho King. He was the King of the Ring, and um, they had King of the Ring long before they made the pay per view out of yeah. it with Bret Hart. Yeah. And but uh, yeah, so he was the Macho King because they had Harley Race, King Harley Race. They've had Kings before, right? Right. But uh, so he was managed at this point, Macho, by Sensational Sherry. Yeah. And she yeah. became Sensational Queen Sherry, and the guys would carry them the ring and the throne and all yeah. that. And they'd be sitting there. Yeah. And uh, so he had already done the Miss Elizabeth stuff. <coughs> Mm-hmm. And this was the retirement match. So Warrior beats Savage with a foot on the chest. Doesn't even cover him. Just fucking jobs him out. Foot on the chest. Right. One, two, three. And it was a great match. That might have been Warrior's best in-ring performance ever. I mean, yeah. he needed a good guy to take it out of him. I was just talking to my boss today. If you're going to compare somebody from today to Warrior, hey. Batista. Yeah. He's a body. Yeah, big guy, right? He's a right. cool entrance. His right. promos suck. His matches suck, but he can have a good match with the yep. right person, that yep. kind of thing. That was Warrior to a T. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Savage at WrestleMania 7, that match was great. Yeah. Savage was real meticulous. He would want to pre plan, and DDP was known for this too. They would script out their matches in advance. I'm going to do, like, literally, we lock up. Then I do a headlock. Then I throw you against the ropes. Then you duck. Then you clothesline. Right. Then body slam. Then right. I'll come off the top. Then we'll get some heat. And then we'll do this. They, they would literally script out their entire match. Yeah. So yeah. because he was working with somebody who not only was a great worker like Savage. Everybody knows Savage is a great worker. Right. Steamboat Savage. That's made three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's working with somebody who's not only a great worker and can pull a good match out of somebody. But who's going to tell him step for step for step for step and go over it like crazy with them. Because it was... I remember when Savage and DDP worked, because they both have that style, and they're like the only two that have a style. When they worked together in WCW, the fucking fa- the boys, quote-unquote, we're not supposed to be able to say that because we're not one of them. Right, right, right. You know that? Yeah, I know. You're not right. allowed to say the boys if you're it's not one of them. It's an unwritten rule. Exactly. Right. Right, right. But uh, the boys, sorry to say, was um, laughing behind the scenes when DDP and Savage were going to work a program, because like, could you imagine how fucking anal they're going to be? Right. Pre-planning these matches oh, yeah. with their scripts and their <laughs> yeah. fucking things like that, and that, I mean, there was stories where Savage would have pages and pages of moves that he was going to do, and you know, and really? sequences in the match. Yeah. But yeah, a guy that's a good worker like Savage and that pre-plans that fucking meticulously, it's going to be a good match. Mm. And Warrior with the right person, the right situation can have a good match. Warrior right. Savage WrestleMania Seven probably his best match ever. No shit. But if we're looking at best rivals, you got to do Hogan because of that Sky Dome match. Mm-hmm. Got to do Savage, not only because of that match, they had a couple good matches. One, at, I think one at SummerSlam one year. You got to look at Rick Rude, Rapsing mm-hmm. Rick Rude, get, mm-hmm. gave him some great matches. Um, if you're looking at famous matches, when he beat Honky Tonk Man for the IC title, Honky Tonk Man had, a, a, a at the time, record reign of 454 days. Mm-hmm. I know because it was part of the column I just wrote. And what he, was the match in that column <coughs> you had said that you were a little kid at this no, time? No, no, that was the Wrestling News column. I'm talking about yesterday's column. No, yeah, no, when I was a little saying, kid was the Hogan you, one. Was that the one you cried at? I cried like right, a baby. Right, yeah, I was yeah, a Hulk, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you got to think, it was 1990. I was six years old. Yeah. yeah. No so doubt. I'm a little kid, okay. and I'm a huge Hogan man. But that's Mark. awesome, dude, that but you I, go back and you remember that. I mean, that's you're, all you're, I remember, you're 29, really. If you ask me to tell you, I'm 29. You're 29, and you still remember... That day, remember? You, right, right. If you ask me for Vividly. any any memories of my childhood, right. any memories, I can't tell you shit. I don't remember nothing. Well, Hogan Andre, Warrior. No, I don't remember Andre. Hogan Andre. Right, not right. at all. No, yeah. I, Hogan Andre, I had to have been like three at the time or something. Yeah. So, of course, I'm not going to remember that. But even though like, you right. ask me for any, if you tell me, if you're my, because my sister's got a great memory. And she'll say, remember this, blah, 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 when I'm like 10 or when I'm like 12. I'm like, right. No, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. I can tell you right now where I was sitting, yeah. what I was doing, this and that. I don't oh, remember shit. who was with me. It was yeah. some parents that I had at the time. Because I had a lot of different Isn't ones. it awesome, dude? But I remember, I remember watching Hogan after the match. And he was the, kind of the behind-the-scenes story about that is Hogan passed a torch to Warrior that night. Right. And they were setting Warrior for this long, multi-year run as champion, which never happened. So, but Hogan... After the match was so selfish, mm-hmm. 
He's doing the sad face. He's fucking drawing the fucking sympathy from the crowd. Oh, but yeah. I remember that made me cry because I'm like, oh, so, man. So oh, everybody... Seen, oh, he seems so indestructible, and here he is so vulnerable. This, and, this is back Vince Sr., right? This is back... No, 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 no Vince Jr. The, okay. WrestleMania 1, Vince, Vince Jr. was already in... All right, let me, let me ask you this, then. Everybody hated Warrior, right? The boys hated him backstage. The, the guys... They had friends. They hated say him. everybody, but no, not, most people. Not everybody. Most. But... Okay, Hater. so you yeah. would think in, in today's day and age, a guy that's not liked backstage, got backstage heat, they're going to job him out. Is it because the Warrior was just so goddamn popular that they said, we're pushing this guy, whether well, you like him well, or, or, or the locker room may, <coughs> may dislike him, well, but that's we just, are pushing this guy yeah. because he's He debuted in so 85, over. like we said. He was, a lot of people know this, he was Blade Runner... He was Blade Runner Rock. God, the Blade Runner. And then there was Blade Runner Sting, and that became Sting became There's Sting. There's no one I'm talking about that whole trial, right? Yeah. Blade we Runner brought this up last week. We already said all this. But, but yeah, there was Blade Runner Rock, Blade Runner Sting. I think that was their names. I know okay. one of them was Rock, and I'm pretty sure that was Warrior. The other one was Sting. I think Sting just became Sting. So they got into the business together, and I think this was Mid South, and they ended up that you know they didn't like Bill Watts, the, the promote the Vince McMahon of Mid South. They didn't like right. him. the guy that gave Jim Ross his start technically really. And, Are you uh, getting into the reason why they pushed him? Yes. Okay. He right. he debuted and almost instantly you could tell whoa he's a star. The crowd. He had the look. The crowd face him paint. Up. Right. Not so much in Mid South, although they did get over pretty damn good for considering they were brand brand spanking new. Nobody knew anything about him. By the time yeah. he hit WWE, he was originally the Dingo Warrior. Yeah. Not the Ultimate Warrior. Remember he the debuted name. as the Dingo Warrior. Right. And that right. was because something... What the fuck? I'm not going to remember this. There was, was some, a shot, a rib, or... No, no, there was some tie-in to somebody that he trained with or who helped him out that was either from Australia or had something connected to Australia. And the Dingo ate your baby <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from Australia, right. so they named him Dingo Warrior. But, um... <laughs> yeah, so Warrior... Vince, you know, ended up dropping the Dingo Warrior... I think so, it was Dingo the Ultimate Warrior or something like that. There was Ultimate in there. But long story short, right. they reduced the name to Ultimate Warrior. But to, to get back to the point, as soon as he hit the scene in WWE, almost immediately. Crowd he, ate him up. He, you could tell. Him, and, right. and this earlier, I was talking to my boss, this was one of the first cases of the music. Because you got to remember, the music in wrestling was not really a... Uh, I got it, motherfucker. I'm listening. ...was not really a significant part of the package in the presentation yet. Music was still kind of new when he debuted in the in the mid-'80s, late-'80s or whatever. Right. Uh, especially WWE in late-'80s when he got there. Music was still not new, but it was still... It wasn't, like, the commonplace yet. You know, right. I think everybody had music at that point, but it was, like, still, like, a new part of the wrestling presentation. Because the, the, the Freebirds really got that started, at least the rock part of the music. Uh -huh. Sergeant Slaughter would play the Marine Corps hymn when he would come out, stuff like that. And um, so you gotta understand the Warriors' entrance song, which we played a couple times tonight already, was right. so catchy and it and was, dude. Even as soon as that night, first note would hit, people would just explode, and then he me, would run to the ring. He would shake the ropes. He had the body, the face paint, right. like so. Right. It didn't matter what he even did when the bell night, rang. Uh, before with, the bell even rang, the fans loved him. Boone, but and he got yeah, over quick. Boone's talking about his music. Even last night where the guys were standing on stage on Raw, and after the tribute video aired, right, and they shot back to all the guys, you see a bunch of the guys on stage, you know, head bobbing to the theme. Because yeah. it was one of those themes that you were just... Dun, yeah. dun, 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 Jim Johnson dun, wrote dun, it. Dun, dun. Jim Johnston wrote it, and the story Vince told at least on the Destruction DVD, so you don't know how legitimate it is, yeah, but he was putting right. them over at this point still. Well, think, before they buried him in that DVD, he said, I was explaining to Jim Johnston, our music composer, that I need to encapsulate this phonetic energy right. that Warrior has when he fucking runs the ring. Like, right. I need something that's perfect music to, to and go And that was that. it, too. Dun, dun, and man, dun, that dun, first dun, note. Dun, 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 yeah, right, right, right. I, I guess we could play it while we're talking here a little bit. But, yeah, um, throw it over us, you know? Yeah. I mean, as right soon as there. you hear that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. and you gotta think. I, don't, I wish I had the other themes from back in that day, you know, to go with this. But you gotta think. Hulk Hogan, the biggest star, is coming out. To, I am a real man. Right, 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 dude. I mean, by the time that 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 right. da, 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 that was right. cool. Yeah. For the time, it sounds right. ridiculous now. But it, unless you know. Hogan. Well, and it's like Austin too. When Austin's when the glass breaks, yes. so everybody's like, "Wow!" You know what I mean? Same thing with the Rock, dude. When you yeah. hear that, if you smoke, well, then, you know then that, that was the age where they started putting the little catchphrases, and as soon as people hear that, they know who it is. Then the music goes right. after, you know, right. like you know, Undertaker had the gong, Rock had the you know, Vader yeah. had it's time, it's time, it's Vader time, right, right. 
But, uh, yeah, so the music was a big part. The, the fucking body, the face paint, the running to the ring, the shaking the ropes. A lot of people said... Even the that stuff was, hanging off his arms. Yeah, he had the the the, the, the ring attire was color coordinated with the face paint. Right. It all matched. It was great. for yeah, the whole package. Great for marketing. You could yep. put out dolls with these colorful things. You know, yep. it was great for kids yep. and all that stuff. But a lot of people inside the business were of the mindset that he sucks shit in the ring. Yeah. He's the drizzling <laughs> shits in the ring. And not only that, he doesn't even. I mean, this is stuff I've heard. He doesn't even want to learn, really. Right. He right. knows that his thing is don't sell shit, really. Not a lot, at least, in the beginning. He even had that famous thing. But he thing knew he was where, big enough. Like, Hogan had that thing where you'd hit him, he'd start hulking up. You'd hit him, and then you! Yeah, and then he'd right, start right, going right, back. Right. Warriors was, people would hit him, and he'd just ignore him. Right. He'd start shaking the ropes and doing totally this kind no, of thing. No yeah, just right, no right, selling right. everything right. they hit him with. He was right. invincible. That was the only selling he would do. He would sell up to that, and then that was his comeback. Right. That was when he was already the big deal that he became. Right. When he was early on, he would just fucking run over guys. It was yeah. like a Goldberg thing where he would just... That's why Goldberg and him could get compared a lot. Because they were mainly a body. Mm-hmm. A cool entrance. Goldberg had the, the uh, awesome music, just mm-hmm. like Warrior. Mm-hmm. You know, dan Right. Right. dan but uh, and then he had the uh, the pyro that explode on him. He breathed in the smoke, blow yeah. it out, rah, yeah. rah, rah, snort, spit, yeah. walk to the ring. Yeah. Twenty seconds later, he's done. You know, All right? Warrior That's was the same thing. Warrior would would not really sell a lot. He would just go through <coughs> and squash people, and obviously you're going to get over it if you look like this unstoppable oh, killer absolutely. Right. in the right. ring. And you have the cool entrance, the cool music, the cool right. look, the shake in the ring. He had the whole thing. But everything. in the business, the guys package. were like, "Yo, he sucks. He doesn't want to learn. Right. He's selfish." Right, and he's gonna get pushed by the machine WWE but the because the fans loved him. Because the they, there's a connection with the fans, right. yeah. So now let's uh, before we get out of here, let's talk about uh, the departure from WWE. Uh, the there was a the bunch of them. Yeah. Well, the final departure where we hadn't seen him. God, it's been over ten years, right? Eighteen years. Eighteen years. WWE. He went to WCW. Years. A lot of people forget that he had a WCW run. He wasn't WCW. Yeah, they did the Batman yeah. thing where they'd flash his logo up yep. with the light, and yeah, and he would do the One Warrior Nation OWN thing. So on his on his final WWE departure, he parted on terrible terms. I'm guessing as we pretty much every seen time there was a bad years. split. Yeah, it was a it was pretty much a bad split. Now that's where it's tricky. I can't even really tell you because I don't fully know the story, but I know the story was told on the Destruction DVD, right? Which was that his dad had died. He had but no you can't. Show. It's like that Destruction DVD dude. Yeah. He, anything that's but there's, said there. There's a little it. truth in everything, and, yeah. I, and I know that. Okay, so his dad died. You know, showed some bookings. They actually made fake posters for that DVD to. To over exaggerate Did how many bookings really? he knows showed. They're like, look at all, you know, all these posters from all these events, and he didn't show up right. this one and this one and this one. Right. He, he, that wasn't true. Right. And the, the story came out when he was still alive that, that the back and remember the letters that we posted that Vince and Warrior went yep. back and forth yep. with? Uh-huh. That was really the story behind. I believe that was the final. No, that might have been the second to last because he had demanded as much money as Hogan and all this. And there's a lot of controversy. A lot of controversy. They went to stuff, court. Yeah. Right. And then he, because they didn't want him to use the warrior name when he left WWE, so he changed his name legally. Legally, I saw that. Warrior, I yeah, saw that. thinking right, that would make right. him uh, legally allowed to use the name right. for his own personal right. shit. Right. But yeah, the last time he had his last run, he had this comic book he wanted WWE to promote. He had all these stipulations. You got to push my comic book. Uh, and there was a couple other things I can't remember. But he had like all these case of hardball, you know. Well, yeah, he, he wanted this, says. and he got it. He got this very special deal, and then I forget what happened that led to his thing. But yeah, he he didn't part on great terms. He didn't. We haven't no. seen him in eighteen years. So, there you go. So he probably parted on uh, on horrible terms. So listen, he's had his ups and downs through his career, but the fact of the matter is, when you look back on it, when I was a kid, I remember oh, Warrior he, running out. And he like influenced he so many people that wrestle today. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a million guys that'll tell you, yo, Warrior was my first favorite guy in wrestling, and he right. was the reason I wanted to become a wrestler. You'll hear a lot of, and big a names people will do. tell you that. Right. Right. You know? When I was a kid, I still remember Warrior running down to the ring. I shake, thought you didn't get into the attitude ropes. era. I got in in the late, in eight, late 80s, man. In the very late 80s, my father would take me to wrestling events. I was a little kid. I was only 8, 9, 10 years old yeah. in the late 80s. But uh, Dad would used to he's take older me than to... Me. Old it was, fuck over here, but yeah. The Bushwhackers <clears throat> would be at these events. The Ultimate Warrior. Ric Flair would be Who's there. That? The Bushwhackers. Yeah. The bush Don't lick my face, but yeah, that, that <laughs> was lick the Lick your bush. head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, uh, 
No, the Bushwhackers, the Legion of Doom, the Ultimate Warrior. I remember going to events in Albany where all those guys were there, man. And it was like, man, Warrior's here. Warrior would be in the main event at house shows. He would come out, he'd shake the ropes. It yeah, it sounds like awesome the time period you're talking about day. was when he was the guy. He, that's when... Because Hogan dropped the title to him and then kind of disappeared for a while. Then he came back. Right. They had Warrior drop the title to Sergeant Slaughter, and that's when they did that controversial... Slaughter was there, too, They did right? that controversial Iraq angle where yeah. Sergeant Slaughter was an Iraqi sympathizer, and Saddam Hussein gave me these wrestling boots, and I'm going to kick Hogan's ass. So right. they gave Slaughter right. the title. Warrior lost to Slaughter, and it was a screw job uh, ending. Macho King took his royal scepter. <coughs> beat I was there. Uh, Sid Vicious was back. Yeah, exactly. That, right. that, that, yep. I could build up to that. Yep. Yeah. So King Macho King beats him with the uh, the royal scepter. Does the run in. Right. When uh, Warrior Sa- uh, Slaughter fighting for the title, S- Savage hits him with the royal scepter. Leads to Slaughter pinning him. Screw job finish, but it changes the title. Slaughter's now the champion. So going into WrestleMania that year, it was Sergeant Slaughter versus Hulk Hogan, and also. Randy Savage versus Warrior Retirement match Randy that I Savage, mentioned earlier. Yep, yep. And in the match, um, is that when Warrior came back or Sid came back? I don't remember. I think that might have even been like... Savage, Warrior, Stink, Bushwhackers, Leeds in a Doom when uh, Ric Flair when yeah. Bam was taking me to these events. Ric Flair was, was WWE? Ric Flair was so WWE. So this was probably 92 or 93. Okay. Very so late 80s, been. early 90s. One late somewhere 80s. around there. Okay. Well, Ric Flair came in because he won the Royal Rumble 92. Early 90s then. I was at the Royal Rumble that Ric Flair that won. That was in Albany. That was in Albany. I Famous was there. Royal Dad Rumble. took me to that. You there? I was in that's like one of That's my row that's on the floor, bro. On the floor. That's my favorite Royal if Rumble If you ever. go back, you can see. I'll show you a video on YouTube. Yeah. Of Ryan Clark and Pa Dukes. In the so I gotta get some screenshots in like the, the uh the what was it the we uh, can get them what was Ryan the, Clark the, the, the Stone Cold McMahon stuff I took school was that the I was right there, I was right there in the first was that the beer truck or the, the Zamboni truck. what was I the, was there no it was the Paul Heyman promo with uh, Vince McMahon where he takes his hat off yeah but that wasn't the one on the Mr. Hat. McMahon DVD I'm there in the beer truck man I'm uh I'm in like the third row with the beer truck in Albany I'm there with Paul Heyman and Vince McMahon where he takes his hat and he throws it yeah. and he shooting on Vince. I was Screw there for that. You. Yeah. Screw you. I was there for uh, the Ric Flair winning the most famous Royal Rumble man, of they all time. Cool shit in Albany. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hell Dude, yeah. Dude, without a question, 92 Royal Rumble is my favorite. Bobby yeah. Heenan on commentary. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Bro, he was awesome. It's not fair. Hey, it's not fair to Flair. Yeah. I got uh He was awesome. Wait a minute. You got a, you got a beer opener yeah. now? Do you Listen. need one? No. Oh. I got a full Wait a minute. Ultimate Warrior, brother. Fuck you, man. Ultimate Warrior, man. Listen. Had a great career, a storied career. Um, some Big people time. loved him, some people hate him. But when you look back well, all on fans him, loved him. When you look back well, you on good. the Ultimate Warrior on this day, it was a tragic, tragic death. And anybody who dies young is tragic. Yeah. When it all comes down to it, I'm just glad that I got to see him. One last time, a couple last times yeah. at the Hall of Fame, at Monday Night Raw, and it's a fitting ending to a guy where for he, eighteen, let's put it this way. For 18 about this? years. We talked about how suddenly he would hit the ring, how sudden he hit WWE and immediately became a star. As and quick how as he came he died. He went how sudden he died. In very warrior fashion. In very warrior fashion. Yeah. So it uh, it is it was when that news broke and you had seen him twenty four hours earlier. It was just that's one of the more wow. shot. I mean, we've wow been covering wrestling since ninety nine, two thousand, whatever it was, ninety nine, fifteen years on the dot. About and, that, um, yeah. yeah. There's been a lot. Unfortunately, there's been a, a fucking lot of deaths that we've had to report on. I think on. Uh, Eddie Guerrero, dude, it would take forever. If you're Eddie, gonna, well, if if you want the Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit. I mean, it's yeah, horrible. Yeah. And uh, Ultimate Warrior are probably in the 15 years that I've been doing this. Uh, Sensational Sherry is is another one who was who was up there. But I would say Eddie Guerrero, um, fucking Chris Road Benoit, Warrior Hawk, Road Warrior Hawk, Test. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Guerrero. Go forever, man. I would say Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, and the Ultimate Warrior. With the Ultimate Warrior Dude, and Eddie being right up there. How about there this? As, I mean, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about when I say it. Kurt Henning. Kurt Henning. We were supposed well. to interview That's him the week he died. Right. We That's had him right. scheduled, booked. We talked to him days before it happened. 
on the phone, can you do WCR on whatever we were and doing at then? He agreed to it. He and he was scheduled, and, and he died. Like, the, either the day of the show we were going to do it, like there the day was before. Some, nothing, and I put this on the website, man, nothing sucks more Macho than Macho Man, how big was that one? Randy Savage. Shit. That's what uh, I said. You can't list. It takes forever. There's too many. Listen, That's the point. And nothing, this stands out as one of the most... Like, when you hear the nothing, news, you're like, whoa, it takes your breath away. You're like, shock. Nothing sucks more than having to cover the death of one of your childhood, childhood Absolutely. heroes uh, back in the day. Somebody that I looked up right. to. I was a wrestling fan. Or anybody um, that you've seen a lot that dies right. young and has a right. family that they're leaving behind. When right. you add all that together, you're like, man, I've watched him my whole life. I know. And I have the knowledge that he's got a wife that he loves. He's got kids that love him, young kids. Oh, man, it's just... It's it's tragic, yeah. It's very tragic. So listen, uh, rest in peace, Ultimate Warrior. Um, yeah. You know, it was when the news broke uh, last Tuesday night. It was, I tell you, man. It was a I mean, that, punch that, that one was yeah. that one was wow, wow. Because especially because we had just seen him. It was a big weekend for him, and and uh, you get all. And when you wow. see a guy, especially eighteen years since you've last seen him, or fifteen yeah. if you count WCW, whatever it was. Mm. Over a decade, easily that you since you've really, really seen him, and and then you see him, uh, and yeah. then you have a whole weekend where it's all about Warrior for the most part. The first, right. you know, other than WrestleMania, I mean, and even WrestleMania included him and Raw the next night, but in Hall of Fame, all this stuff. So it's like you get all these memories that you haven't thought of in a while because you're not in 15 years. You're not thinking about Warrior. Every I day. went back on YouTube and watched video after yeah. video after but video. I'm saying Warrior. 15 years. You're not thinking of Warrior every day anymore. No, after you're 15 not. years goes by, you don't think of him at all. So but then, then when you he, see him when he comes back right. and you see him, you're right. suddenly and you're seeing all these video clips of memories that you have from childhood. You're like, wow, I remember that. I remember that. I, I remember that. Oh I shit, know. there's this. There's that. Then he dies, and like you're in the middle of this nostalgic Ultimate Warrior remembering phase. And then he dies, and you're like, damn. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. All right, guys. Uh, we are going to get out of here. Uh, coming up on the websites, a new WWE Extreme Rules match. We're going to put that up. The complete raw script from last night. we got about 10 pages of the raw script. It's coming up on the websites right now at WCRonline.com. And most importantly, we're going to be here tomorrow night for our normal WCR TV Tuesday show. It's going to be WCR TV Wednesday. We're going to give you a Monday night raw, cap, raw recap from last night. Uh, wanted to do everything Warrior tonight, and that's what we did. So Monday night raw recap from last night. Tomorrow night, uh, rapid fire, your live phone calls, chat room. Whatever you guys want to do tomorrow night, come back. We want to see you guys tomorrow night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time, for Matt Boone. That's me. Ryan Clark. That's him. And the Ultimate Warrior. Amen. Rest and in peace. See you tomorrow night. Yeah. No. Ultimate Warrior. All right. I kind of ruins the flow there. But rest in peace, Warrior. See you tomorrow night. Thanks for the memories, brother.